it is the year of Doom once again, as id Software bring us the fantastic looking Doom Eternal. Now, last week, myself and Matteo, who you may know from our social media channels, got a chance to, to go down, uh, meet with some of the guys from Bethesda and id. Uh, we got a presentation from Marty Stratton, the executive producer, um, and actually got to play uh, one of the final builds of the game as well. Uh, we both got to play it, but Matteo got to get some uh, fantastic gameplay footage on controller, unfortunately. We won't hold that against him, though. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a fantastic day, and we wanted to share with you guys a little bit of what we learned. Yep. So, Matteo, All right. let's jump straight into it. Start the footage. All right. So, first impressions, what did you think of the game? Uh, I think it was awesome, honestly. Like, uh, I was a big fan of Doom 2016. Mm -hmm. I thought it had some his issues in the end, but... I think the final product was still pretty solid, and this game seems to be, you know, trying to up the uh, the the game from 2016 in every category and everything. So like, first thing, I mean, as you can see, like the the game looks amazing. Mm. Uh, this is like uh, we captured a footage in 1080p. This is the start of the second level of the mm. game, uh, but the game is obviously gonna run in 4K if you have like you know like compatible uh, console or PC that can. Uh, that can actually run that. So this is using the, I think this is the first game they said that they've made using the new uh, yeah. Intex 7 yeah, yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's the new engine and uh, it shows. I mean, the fact that it's using like a very similar um, art style and graphical style uh, to the um, to the game that, that actually released four years ago. It, at the beginning, it seems like a bit samey if you look at it, but we've been told that uh, the game has 10 times the number of polygons well, the, first game the, well the way they put it was it's 10 times the geometric detail right. of the Still, previous engine. Like, it, it looks so much better when you go into the details and also thinking that this game is going to run 60 frames per second on every platform. I mean, it does look incredible in my opinion. And that's the first thing that actually hmm. you, you get to see when you play in the game. And one of the things that really kind of stood out to me in the, the, the presentation that we got beforehand was the level of honesty they had with themselves about the shortcomings of the previous yeah, game. Yeah, very refreshing, honestly. Absolutely. I mean, some of the things that they were talking about were things that we were even mentioning on our way to the event. We're like, oh yeah, it was a great game, but... Um, and some of the stuff which they, they mentioned was the, the fact that the gameplay does become repetitive as you go on. Um, the lack of support post-launch, the, the, the lack of innovation in the multiplayer mode. Yeah. Um, and it feels like those are very much the areas where they, they've really gone and focused on in order to keep a player in what they call the fun zone. Yeah, they had this approach that it's, I think it's very, it's very good for when you're developing a sequel. So you, you go in there, you tackle all the criticism. I mean, there were a, there weren't a lot of criticism mm. around the, the 2016 game, but still they tackling everything about the game, yeah. uh, about the previous game, and trying to improve on every single thing. So like, for example, like the first game, the campaign, um, it had a roughly, um, it, it lasted for around 10 to 15 hours mm -hmm. in, their estimate, in their estimates. This time they're up in the standards even more. They said that this game is going to take you 20 to 30 hours to complete. But they're trying to avoid that last part of the game in, 26, in 2016 games that, that was a, a little bit repetitive and it, it, you're starting to feel a little bit, you know, like that, that you were playing this game for a while. Mm. This time, and at least for what they said, they're trying to go for much deeper variety of uh, settings, of situations, and also adding, as we're going to see, a little bit more story into it. Um, it's probably going to help and help this game become really a staple in the FPS market, I think. Absolutely. And I mean, that's not to say that Doom 2016 was a bad game. No. It was a fantastic game already, and I think everyone absolutely loved it. And there's still tons of people playing it. But it feels like they, they really want to kind of attract a, a wider variety of audience uh, with this game. Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, and they talked a lot about sort of g keeping everything in arm's reach. Yeah. They obviously felt that a lot of the, the, the extra content in the previous game was kind of a bit difficult to find, um, or took a little bit of effort to get to, and this time they wanted to bring all the important stuff right within every player can find it, but still added all the extra kind of details yeah, yeah, yeah. around the place and the secrets and everything like that. Well, the levels are still wide, you can mm. wander around and find secrets and whatnot, but they said that some people were really experiencing those because they, they were kind of hard to reach. Hmm. So, at, at least in their first playthrough, I think. So they, they tried to, they, they started with this philosophy of arms reach, as, as you told. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so it, it, it feels a little bit more natural, the progression, uh, in, at least in these first two, three levels that we managed to play. At the, 
at the event. Now, one thing I, I, I do want to ask is what difficulty did cool. you play this on? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there were. Um, this was probably a build that was really close to the the final game, the final build that we're gonna that we're gonna play uh, in March. So um, at this point in time, if I'm not mistaken, there were four levels of difficulties. Mm -hmm. I chose the third one, so like not the most difficult one, but the one just below it. So it was a good challenge. Uh, it wasn't that hard, honestly, uh, but yeah, I feel it's fair, even if you die a couple times in a game like this, because you, you're going to learn how to react next time. Also, with this gameplay loop there are, um, you know, that they, that they created for this game, and also they expanded, let's mm. say, from, the, from Doom 2016, which is incredibly interesting. It makes, makes it so different from the other FPS games. Now, some of the elements that they have added in as well um, to kind of help with that difficulty scaling is is the, the new resource management um, sort of stuff. Yeah. So as we see here, there was a glory kill there which grants you extra health. Uh, you've got the chainsaw kills which give you extra ammo and the, the, the flamethrower grants you um, extra armor. Um, and it really yeah. does create the sense of if there's something you need, you've got to go head into Get the Get it enemy. from the demons. Absolutely. Yeah. And this makes it completely different. You know, like mm. usually in FPS games, you just... When you're low on health, you know, low on hard armor, you just just try to find a corner and hide there for a while. But in this game, you have to run straight at the enemy when you're in danger because you're gonna find your resources only only through uh, killing other entities in the game. Absolutely, and then I mean the, the variety of content they've put in here. Here we've got a fantastic example yeah. of some of the story stuff which they they've added in, um, and it. Again, this is this is very much part of their philosophy of just creating a wider variety of content within the game. You know, they, they, they talk very much about how they want to add more more lore into the game and kind of yeah. give more of a sense of this this you know kind of almost being a real world, but at the same time it's completely crazy and insane. Um, and you've got things like uh, the the codexes, which we've seen you pick up um, through yeah. the gameplay already, which gives you more details on on sort of who the Sentinels are, who the Doom Slayer is, where he comes from, that kind of stuff. We've got fantastic cinematics like this, which just add a lot. Very of, high quality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It just adds a lot of color to the, the the whole experience. Yeah, because uh, you know that people don't play Doom for the story. That's th they also said that. Also, Stratton said that. So if you want to skip this part and just go to the action and be entertained all throughout the, the different levels in the arena uh, shooter kind of sensation that this game give you, gives you, fine. Mm. But uh, they also said that they want this to become a, a goatee contender for this year. So I think it's only fair that they're trying to flesh it out a little bit more and have some part, some, a little bit deeper story mm. uh, ingrained in, 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 the, in the game and I think it works. Uh, we were very, very impressed by the Fortress of Doom part. Oh, that was definitely my yeah. favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you see it kind of briefly in the, the recent trailer that they, they released. Um, which It's literally this kind of like He-Man style castle Greyskull cool. home for the Doom Slayer. Completely mental. Like Just it's like <laughs> great gothic castle on a rock floating around Earth. <laughs> it's fantastic. But it serves as kind of like your home base within the game where yeah. you can go and look at all your collectibles that you picked up throughout the levels. Yeah. Uh, you say you've got an armory and yeah. stuff. There's a, there's a dojo in there that yeah. you, can, you can actually try your weapons and send, uh, you know, like different tactics. There's mm. some demons that uh, spawn in there constantly. So, um, I mean, there's a, it's nice because this game is so intense all the time to have one place at least where you can, you know, pick up your breath a little bit and there's also missions and stuff that you have to do in the in the actual fortress i mean you go there you and just try to examine these these different part of this ship let's mm. call it a ship that is orbiting around uh, around the earth uh so yeah i mean it, it feels very refreshing and new and it's something that it's never been in doom before so like very very nice addition so we just saw the um what was that exactly because that was a slightly different demon that you just um killed there yeah I mean, um, when you are when you have players, friends mm -hmm. in your in your friend list, they are playing the game, um, the campaign specifically. They're gonna die eventually, as you will, as I did a few <laughs> times. Um, so we cut those bits out for you. Oh no, no, no you <laughs> shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, in those parts of the game, uh, when when a person dies and, and is in your friend list, the game is gonna record that. And so it's gonna um, throw at you in your playthrough some of the enemies that killed your friends, mm -hmm. and they're gonna be overpowered. You know, like they're, they're gonna be upgraded to from the from the actual 
from the other enemies that you encounter in the game. So you're gonna see this is the this is the um, uh, the demon that killed Frank. I'm gonna see his name over his head. And so these games are uh, these people are gonna invade uh, your game. And invasion is also now one of the keywords mm. for uh, for this sequel. Also something that they showed us, right? Uh, yeah, they've talked a bit about it, and I, uh, especially last year when they, they were sort of like revealing the game. They haven't shown too much of it, but they did mention that it is something that they are going to bring to the game. Um, I can't remember if they said it's going to be on launch though, or if it's going to come post-launch. Uh, it's going to be both. Uh, there's okay. going to be some um, parts of Invasion are going to be available at launch, and some parts are going to be um, you know, post-launch post support. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's really interesting because they said, okay, there's going to be multiplayer in this game, and we'll get to it. Uh, a little bit later, but I mean, the core of this game has always been the chunky campaign, and they they told us, Marty Stratton told us that people are keep keep on replaying the same levels over and over again just to get a little bit better, and with Invasion, uh, people are gonna have the opportunity to play the same levels but with different enemies. Uh, for example, they showed us a clip you remember from the third level, mm -hmm. the beginning of the third level. Was that the, the, the master level stuff? I think it was Invasion things. No, because I think the invasion stuff is where like your other players can come into your game and basically attack you um, as demons and that. But they also talked about master levels, which is where you can go back the and remixes. replay. Yeah, yep. go back and replay certain levels. Oh yeah, levels. so um, maybe I got them um, mixed up, but still, like that is going to be very interesting. Mm. Uh, these master levels, because uh, you know you're going to have like different enemies uh, in the in the levels that you visited before. So like the, we were at the third level and they had like you know end game yeah, yeah. Uh, foes to to fight, which was really really fun. Yeah. And they're obviously talking about sort of post-launch content. Yeah. And that was one of the things that they said they're going to be adding more and more master levels as the game continues. Yeah. Um, other things which they mentioned, um, campaign DLC. Uh, they, they talked about at least two campaign DLC coming post-launch. Yeah. Um, there's the other multiplayer modes, which for the life of me, I can't remember the name of now. Yeah. Um, well, but essentially where you have your, your I, I mean, we've all seen it, the Doom Slayer versus uh, two demons, uh, which are played by other players. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things which they said post-launch they want to bring is skins for that game mode, new demons that you can play as in that multiplayer game mode, um, as well as new maps as well. And all of that is going to be completely free. Yeah which is obviously fantastic, no microtransactions, that's what we all like to see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not that, you know, in spending 60 euros, 60 pounds or whatever on this game, you don't get mm. already uh, a very good amount of content. Um, well, this part is interesting, I think, because we're, we're trying to solve a puzzle here, uh, looking at the gameplay, and uh, there's this purple goo that does not allow you to jump or run. So in this part of the game, you are completely, almost, uh, you know, defenseless in terms of, you know, mm. uh, escaping these tentacles that are really nice tentacles that are uh, actually sprouting for this uh, from this goo. Relying and, on some twitch shooting skills with a shotgun there. Yeah, that you see that I really don't master. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's what you get for playing with the controller. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't, don't give me shit for that. I, I'm a peasant, peasant console <laughs> gamer. So yeah. Anyways, th this was really interesting because it also changed a little bit the the rhythm of the game. You know, like uh, you're always jumping and running around, and then uh, having to concentrate on the actual shooting for a little while was uh, refreshing enough. And now, you know, you see that there's still levels. Uh, there's still uh, oh, this is also another. Thing that they added the opportunity to, uh, that you can climb walls now. Mm. Um, this combined with the double jump and also uh, the other um, ability that we're gonna unlock later, mm -hmm. which is the, the dash, mm. it, it makes it much more fluid, if possible, uh, even more fluid than the than, than the first game. I mean, you got all sorts of ways to traverse the levels. Mm -hmm and uh, it makes it incredibly satisfying to play. So we see there a little bit of um, the weapon upgrade system, yes. which is slightly different uh, to the previous game. Talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, um, so in this case, uh, the, there's two ways that you can actually, from what we've seen mm -hmm. for now, uh, upgrade your weapons. First is you can find those um, those upgrades actually inside the levels. Mm -hmm. they, some of them might be a little bit hidden, some of them might be just in plain light. Uh, so we just found one and we applied it to our to our weapon. And that, what does it do? You can uh, unlock uh, one of the extra you know abilities for the weapon, mm -hmm. one of the extra things. Like for example, for the shotgun, 
We had the, your favorite. The, oh, the sticky bombs. The sticky bombs. They're, they're so much fun. Yeah, exactly. They're so great. And uh, you see, this is the dash mm. that you can do. Um, the sticky bombs, so you can you can add that to your add, add those to your arsenal, and you can have one. Let's call them mods. Mod uh, to your weapon uh, active at all times, so you can switch through them uh, in battle. Uh, so every weapon gets two. And on top of this, these mods and the weapon itself can be upgraded with weapon points. These are like, you can see them in the in the top right corner of the screen. There's a 2 out of 10 there. Uh, if you uh, complete levels in the best way possible and you kill all the enemies and you find the secrets, at the end of the level you're gonna get awarded these points that are actually used to upgrade, uh, you know, like mm, the, the actual mods that you, that you have in the game. So, final thoughts before we get to the end of the gameplay footage here. They talked about Doom Eternal being a Game of the Year contender. Yes. And they were they were very serious about that. And personally, I think that's a bit of a ballsy statement. Yeah. Looking is. at how stacked the lineup for this year is. Yeah. Do you think it can compete on that level? I think that they're doing all the things correctly to make this game a GOATI contender. Hmm. I don't know because I know that there's going to be lots of breakthrough breakthrough games that are going to be released this year. You know, like games like Cyberpunk or The Last of Us Part 2 or Halo or... You know, like, there's going to be games that are really going to be shaping your, our industry for the years to come. Mm -hmm. This game is going to be an amazing sequel, I'm sure of it. I loved it, I wanted to keep on playing it, but I played for three hours straight. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% convinced that this is enough to become a, a Cody contender, but I think that they're doing everything they can to make this game better than the first one, and it's already, you know, like a huge feat, and I, you know, applaud them for that. Then, if it gets Cody nominees and gets Cody nods at the end of the year, we're gonna see. I mean, the second half of the year is still a mm. bit mysterious, you know? So, but still, amazing work from Mid Software. We loved it, right? Absolutely agreed, yeah. Fantastic game, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the full thing. Yeah, and look at this. This <laughs> like, is so crazy. It is fantastic. Well, that's all from us. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, look out for Doom Eternal coming on the 20th of March. Yes. Take care. Cheers.